Guess what guys, we're back on this guy. We had a couple guys out here PMing and they thought it was low on charge. So the guy hooked up his gauges to it. Apparently it's pulling down pretty deep. That was not pulling down that deep when I looked at it a couple weeks ago when we did the condenser motor there. So let's open this thing up and see what's going on with it now. All right, we just got her started up here. <coughs> got our probes connected. We'll watch her for a couple minutes. It's pretty, it's kind of cool out right now. I got it running in air conditioning mode. The other technician was talking about, she bottomed out like 18 PSI. So I'm thinking we might have a restriction here somewhere. So we'll let it run for a couple minutes and see what it does. She's ran for about another five minutes now. I'm not debating that it's not low on charge. I mean, she could definitely take a, take a little bit of charge, but he said this thing bottomed out. I mean, like, he said it ran for a few minutes and then took a freaking nosedive, fell off a cliff. I'm just not seeing that right now. That I'm not, I'm not doubting it. I mean, it might be a pound or so low on charge. We're gonna put our uh, our temp probes on and see what uh, see what the temperatures look like too. All right, guys, we've been letting her run for a good while now, and uh, looks like there's not much change. Here is our delta T. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not horrible got my meter hooked up to the blower amperage here so I can monitor that and see if maybe the blower is dropping out because that would warrant um, a decline in suction pressure. If the blower is dropping out, you definitely have a drop in your, um, in your suction pressure and it'll drop quick. Looks like we got about 17 degree delta T. Six degrees of superheat, seven degrees of sub cooling. <clears throat> R22 system. All right, I think I'm going to shift it over into heating mode and then shift it back because she's been running steady in cooling mode. I haven't seen any signs of restriction, anything like that. I don't know, we might we might just put a little tiny bit of charge in it. But man, this thing is, uh, this thing doesn't look like it's very low on charge. All right, we're gonna switch over to heating mode by just pulling our O wire, which is up in here. So we're just gonna pull that right off. And that did nothing. Okay. Let's put that back then. <laughs> there it goes. Let her run for like that for a minute. All right, it's been running in heat mode for a few minutes now. Doesn't look a whole lot different. Um, I hook up a probe to my discharge line too. That looks like it's at 191 and 187 on my um, on the line up there on the liquid line. There is a difference there, which is expected. So I'm going to shift it back in cooling mode here in a minute and see if we can drum up a, a restriction somewhere or something, because I haven't found anything wrong yet. Let's see what kind of heat it's making, actually, real quick. 
So it looks like it's got, hope you guys can see that. Looks like we got about a 20 degree split in heating mode <clears throat> with just our heat pump. All right, we're gonna shift it back in air conditioning and see if we can see if we can cause this thing to mess up some kind of way. All right, I'm trying to simulate a blower failure here. So I disconnected my G. I just had it jumped out. And I'm gonna see if uh, my fan will drop out and see if I can get similar readings to what the other technician had. Okay, my blower just dropped out. I wanna see what these pressures get down to with no, with no blower. Stand by. All right, yeah, you see, we're, we're getting down to the lower 20s now and dropping. I just have a feeling our blower was dropping out for some reason. See our suction lines frosting up now. I have a feeling that blower was dropping out and he just didn't catch it in time. Well, that's what we're going to focus on right now. We're going to see if we can make the blower malfunction at all. All right, our blower cap is under 20%. We'll at least go throw a blower cap on it. All right, I got my new blower cap in there. Um, I fixed my, uh, my condenser cap. I was supposed to put a piece of band iron on that. Last time I was here, didn't, but... I moved it inside here and put a piece of band iron on it now. Uh, support that a little bit better. All right, we're gonna cut this thing back on. All right, it's back on now. It's been running for a little bit. I suspect my blower is dropping out. I just can't prove it. I've already changed the capacitor. I've watched it run for a while. I've drop the fan out just to see what my pressures got down to and they got down very similar to what the other technician said he saw so either one he did not have G jumped out properly oh hold on hold on a minute dropping out all right let's see if we're losing voltage all right I, I hooked my 24 volt all right I hooked my meters up to the 24 volts to the blower relay it's actually that little board back in there and it hasn't dropped out I'm wondering if I just have a faulty connection or what because it has not dropped out since I've had this hooked up hmm. watch it a couple more minutes all right I've cut the compressor off by removing my Y call and I've just got a G call now no sense in keeping on running the compressor I don't think that's the issue and I have not got it to malfunction again. Man. If I could just see if I'm losing the call on G or if that relay board is acting up. Definitely has seen better days, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. I'm going to trace out my green wire, my G wire there, that 47A green wire G. I'm gonna trace that out and make sure there's no breaks or kinks in it um, that might that might cause a drop, a dropout. So um, I'm gonna trace that out now. I just have it jumped out right here to R. 
and I have had that the whole time. So let me trace that out and make sure there's no there's no breaks in that wire, and then we'll uh, before we actually call it a bad relay. All right, I've actually pulled the G wire all the way out so we can inspect it properly and check continuity through it. Doesn't look like it's bad, but could have a bad connector or something. Really anything, so might even just replace it. That's only a short piece of wire. We'll just go ahead and put a new piece of wire on it just so we know that it's not the wire. All right, I've got my, my both ends of my meter leads hooked up to this wire. We're just gonna check it for continuity. It's got good continuity. Oh, I just knocked it off there, but looks good. I don't think there's any breaks in this wire anywhere. Something we do have, we do have a leaky Schrader. I don't know if you can hear that or not. So we're gonna go ahead and change that out. All right, the first thing we're gonna do when we change a valve core out is you got to get your valve core remover tool. All right, taking you hook. Spin that on just like you were to put a your hose on. All right, now with that on, you put the valve core removal tool in. All right, and then we're gonna press that in and we're gonna grab hold of the valve core. And you're gonna keep spinning it until you hear it start skipping or feel it start skipping. That means it's out. All right, you hear that skipping? Hear that? That means it's all the way out and the threads aren't catching anymore. So most of the time it's gonna shoot it right out for you. See that? It shoots it right out. And you take and close your shut off valve off. Take this end off and there's our valve tool. Let's get a new valve core and put a new one in. We've got our new valve core loaded up. We're just gonna slide him right in there. Open our valve back up. Push it in. And we're gonna keep spinning until it's, until it's tight. That's pretty snug. All right. Now what I like to do is I like to undo this end one more time just to relieve the pressure. And then spin the rest of it off. Here we go. New valve core installed. All right, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that this, uh, this little relay board here is bad. When I started it up from the from the thermostat, it clicked a couple times and then finally started. But now I've had the G call disconnected for a good five minutes now, and it has not the fan has not dropped out. And now it's finally dropped out. <laughs> right when I said something, it dropped out. All right, we're going to try to restore the G call and see if I can get it to do that clicking again and, be, and then it, where it won't start. All right, right now I'm letting the system stay off, no fan at all. For about 10, 10 15 minutes, I'm gonna let it stay off because when I had it off before, I disconnected my gauges, changed that valve core, about, about 10 or 15 minutes it went by. Then I tried to jump out G again and that's when that relay started clicking on and off and my blower didn't come on right away. So that's what I'm gonna do this time and see if I can catch it doing it and seeing if I have voltage on my G call going to my relay. I think I do, I just, I just really have to prove that that relay board is bad. 
So we're gonna give it a couple more minutes and then we're gonna jump it back out and then see if I can make that, uh, that fan stop. All right, well, I've been trying to get it to malfunction again. I just can't, I can't ever catch it doing it long enough, but that, that relay board is bad. They actually call it a time delay. But, uh, I am going to get it from our local train distributor and we're gonna change that out at a later time. I'm tired of farting with this thing. So, I know that's my culprit. I caught it doing it one time, couldn't catch it doing it again. So, we're gonna, instead of trying to wait and see, we're just gonna replace that board. Yep, that's what it is. You know guys, sometimes at the end of it, you just have to go with your gut. And my gut is telling me that that blower relay is bad. I did witness it clicking on and off when I, uh, 24 volts was first applied. And then I witnessed it not dropping out in a timely manner when the G-call was removed. So could I actually definitively say that it's bad? No, but I did watch it malfunction. So sometimes you gotta go with your gut, guys. And, and and just and just say, look, I mean, I've seen this kind of stuff before and I have a feeling that it's this blower relay. And I could sit there for another hour or two hours and keep messing with it and doing this and that with it, but um, I'm, I'm going with my gut on this one and I think that blower relay board is bad. So I've, um, I've emailed the manufacturer and I'm waiting on an email back from them to get the, the correct part in there. Um, and then we'll, then we'll go back and put that on. So sometimes it's not gonna jump right out at you. And sometimes you really gotta dig into them, especially this one where I was just there, put a condenser motor in it. Then the uh, scheduled PM came a couple days later, a week later, and the guy thinks he's got a low refrigerant situation or a restriction. And that really got me scratching my head because I was like, no way. This thing was running pretty good when I left it. But, I mean, things can happen to these things, you know, in a couple days. So, but, all right, guys, that's it for this one. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I'm off to the next one.